Coach Quiet uh, graduated 2013 from Ohio Northern, exercise physiology, uh, probably looking like about 197 right now. All right, start down here. I'm Brody. First and last name. Brody Bookless. I'm a senior finance student. I'm from Riverview High School, and I'm at 197. What's the bend? So say, if you're not, make sure you guys say what state your high school is. Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my name's Bailey Gibson. You can call me B Dog. <laughs> nope. Uh, I'm from Elida. That's Ohio. And probably 149. <laughs> I'm Camden Spears. I'm, I'm an electrical engineer. Uh, I'm probably going to have to be 125. <laughs> <laughs> he looks humongous. Uh, I'm Luke Weiss. I'm the federal electrical engineer at Hilliard, uh, <laughs> Ohio. And so we class 149 to 41. Ooh. I'm Jason Sumner. You can call me Chase. Um, I'm 149 from Ada High School here. Biology pre-PA. Wait. Oh, that's in Ohio. I said <laughs>
speak up. I'm Skylar Caprella. I'm a pharmacy major, senior um, from Hani High School. So close. I'm not a county, I promise. Where'd you live this summer? I'm a sophomore, I'm manufacturing technologies, I'm from Oregon Clay, and project 165. What's your name? <laughs> 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 uh, I'm Connor Dixon, uh, I'm a junior, I think we're Dillon, Austin, Um I'm a criminal justice major, and I'm That's right. And I'm protected to 174. Everyone. God. Uh, my name is Sean Wagner. I'm a nursing student and junior um, from Southampton, Connecticut. You know, I'm on the top right. With all the other little shit states. <laughs> and I'm protected 177. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Dillon, I went to Lebanon High School. I'm a mechanical engineer student. Projected weight 65, 74. All right, I'm Paul Mefford. I'm an accounting major, senior status academically, sophomore athletically. Many like high school with Dylan and Connor. Definitely can't fit into any small shorts. Watch out, Tanner! I'm Mason Fulton. I'm a junior. I'm a freshman. I'm from Oregon Clay. I'm majoring in marketing. I'm from Central Catholic in Toledo. And I'm probably going to be 197. Hi, everybody. I'm Alex Kowal. I'm a senior nursing student. I'm new to this whole wrestling thing. I'm going to try it out. Um, I'm from Bishop Fenwick. And uh, projected weight 49 or 57. Nope. We'll see what happens there. I'm Ross Rayfield. I'm from uh, Delta, Ohio. I'm, say, junior. Uh, education major. I just transferred here. Uh, projected 141, 149. Um, I'm Noel Williamson. I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, I'm a special ed slash uh, early childhood education major. Um, check the weight class, probably like 141 this year. <laughs> 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 I don't think I heard it right. <laughs> 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 heavy, definitely heavy weight. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm Jacob Hammond. I'm from Nerdonia High I came from Nerdonia High School. Uh, I'm a business major and absolutely no questions asked about it. I'm definitely going 141. Still weigh as much as I did last year. So. That's that that's not good. <laughs> I don't know. All right, my name's Antonio Gonzalez. I'm a computer engineering major. 
Uh, I'm from Dublin Kaufman High School and projected weight 49.57. Speak up. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> I've always made weight, though. <laughs> <laughs> Each other. We'll 
Uh, you will also have everybody on the team's name, their real name. Uh, you know, you get, you get Skeeter, this is Scott Lang. Probably the only time you hear him called Scott Lang is today. <laughs> Any other time is Skeeter. All right, but you'll have the phone numbers and email addresses so you can get a hold of anybody you need to. Okay. Uh, anybody in here not have my cell number? Get a hold of me at any time, day, night, doesn't matter, weekend. All right, if you got a problem, you got a question, you make sure you contact me. Uh, do not hesitate to use that. All right, we want to keep everybody together. We want to make sure we get everybody off on the right foot. And it's going to be a little different doing it this year than what it has in the past. Uh, do with everything, but it isn't anything we can't handle. Okay, but if you have questions at any time, an upperclassman, you already know that. Just text me. Call me if you need to, text me well, however you want to get a hold of me. Right? If it's something that I do not know the answer, I will know who on campus we need to get a hold of to help answer that question. Okay? Um, so keep that in mind. Your NCA paperwork, Kyle, is everybody good now? Uh, as far as I could tell, the only, the only ones were Bookless, Wagner, Len, Lenny, we have that one form we're working on with. Uh, so yeah, I think we're pretty much, okay, so Mefford, Mefford was the other one. Paperwork. We've gotten through all the uh, medical paperwork for the athletic trainers. Okay? I cannot emphasize enough with, with everything that's going on, us trying to communicate with you, we got to get information to other people. It's not going to be as easy to do that when we send something to you guys and I say, I need it by this day and time. You guys have to make sure you get it done that day and time. It's twice as hard now getting a hold of guys and trying to get paperwork and things that we need. You guys need to step up, accept that responsibility that when we say, here's a deadline, get it to us by that deadline. You will help us a lot if you make sure you pay attention to those deadlines and get things taken care of when we need them done. Uh, so it doesn't become a burden for other people, especially right now, like working with the athletic training staff, those medical forms, we had to get those in so that Rachel could get your schedule. There was about eight different things that had to happen, but it all started with you guys getting those medical forms filled out. So we're, we're through that, and we've got the NCA forms done, but we'll probably have some more forms here and there as we get going. But as we start that stuff, you guys have got to pay attention to those deadlines and get back to us with the information when we need it. All right, it'll help us a lot. Um, and if you run into any problems, like I said earlier, just communicate with me, guys. Let me know what's going on. We've got three guys that couldn't be at the meeting tonight. One has, well, two has work, half work, uh, and one has class. They're upper class, when they knew, just text me, let me know what's going on. Okay, so if something comes up, make sure you communicate. That is the key word. Let us know what is going on. Okay, um, physicals. They started today. There are guys that had scheduled today make it. I didn't send you a reminder like I wanted to. Skylar, Cam, AJ, and Antonio are all good. Okay, tomorrow, we got Sumner at 8.35, Quiet at 8.35, DeWeese at 8.40, Wagner at 8.40, Metford at 8.45, Gibson at 8.45, Davis at 8.50, Harbison at 10.50, Hardwick at 10.50, Kowal at 10.55, Roeder at 10.55, Dylan at 11, and Lenhoff at 11. And then the rest of you, that if I've not said your name yet, you guys are all on Thursday, you should all have this. Did I send you your time? Wednesday. Okay, yeah, Wednesday at noon, okay? Uh, this is very important not to be late to. They're doing the physicals in the athletic training room. Show up at the time they ask you to show up. Don't be late, don't be too early either, okay? but they've got it on a tight schedule. They can only have so many people in the training room at a time to do this. If something happens that you can't be there, all right, if you've got Rachel's number, you call her. If not, get a hold of me immediately. Okay, but everybody should be okay. That's why you had to send your schedule to Rachel so she could check to make sure you were available at that time and allow time for you to get to the next class or even get here at this one. Okay, so make sure we do not miss these because that'll really mess things up for the athletic training staff. Um, and actually, while I'm talking about it, Rachel wanted me to give you a few reminders. And my, my list of things, I wish it was in a nice logical order, but I kind of bounced around a little bit as I thought about things today. Um, 
Rachel said to reinforce not to be late for that appointment. Okay, if you have a class conflict or something comes up, get in contact with her immediately. Some of you guys may not have Rachel's number, uh, but if you don't, just get a hold of me, Kyle, uh, or Ivan. Okay. Um, okay, the athletic training room itself can't use it for the normal rehab and stuff this week because they're doing physicals, but starting on the 17th, which is Monday, if you need to go into the athletic training room, it's by appointment only. Normally you guys are used to kind of just walking in there during the day if you need to. It has to be by appointment because they have to control how many people they have in there at a time. They're actually also running a training room out of Dio Roberson Stadium, but I haven't told any different. I think Rachel is going to be in the King Horn one. And you don't have to see Rachel. If Rachel's not there, there's another athletic trainer uh, in there and you talk to them. But make sure you set an appointment up uh, if anything comes up. And here again, if you make that appointment, make sure you're there at that time. Okay? Because if you don't show up for your time, that's a time that somebody else could have gotten in there that maybe needed to be in there. So just pay attention to that. Um, Rest of it is stuff I'll go over later. Any questions so far? Okay. Okay, coach's corner, uh, upperclassmen, you know what that is. That's in for freshmen coming in, we have what we call the coach's corner. We will ask you to give us 10 names and addresses of individuals who have supported you in high school. Whether that's your high school coach, a neighbor, an uncle, parents, grandparents, uh, teacher. What we found years ago, we used to do uh, as fundraisers. I'd get an alum who would buy a TV, we'd raffle the TV off, that was a fundraiser. Okay? I'd give each of you 10 tickets, sell them for $5 a piece. Uh, you had to all sell 10 tickets, I'm collecting money. You guys hated it, I hated it. You didn't want to like to sell tickets. What we found out is most mom and dads were just writing us a check to cover your 50 bucks so you didn't have to mess with it. But what that got us on is what we call the coach's corner. Uh, parents, anybody that you give us their name and address, we will send them a letter. We will tell them the letter is on behalf of you. You gave us their name. Ask them if they want to join the coach's corner. We explain the whole process. Uh, there's different levels they can join at. If they want to join, send in a, a check and away they go. If they don't, we don't follow up with it. So we're not going to send them a second letter or a third letter. We're not going to hassle anybody. We just send it. It's, it's been very, very good for us, very supportive. We got a lot of support that way, uh, much needed funds. So we'll be sending that out again. So upperclassmen, Kyle will be sending you your listing from last year. I need you to check that. Okay? I need you to look to make sure there isn't somebody who is now deceased, or if it says Mary and Bob Jones, but Mary passed away this last year, we don't want to send a letter to Bob having an address to Mary and Bob. So please pay attention to whose names you got on there and the address, if they've moved or not, so we don't get it back. They have to get a hold of you, you get a new address. So check those out. Uh, probably check them out with mom if any of those have changed. Freshman, we will be giving you an Excel spreadsheet. We'll need you to come up with 10 names and addresses. A lot of times you guys call home mom. Okay, I need these 10 names. Uh, I will probably send out what the coach's corner is to the parents in an email just so they're aware of it. So when you're calling, trying to explain to them what it is, and you don't really understand necessarily what it is, uh, that'll help. Okay, but that'll be coming down the road here in the next week. Um, Student Athletic Advisory Council, better known as SAC. Cash, you're still our rep, and I think Bailey, did you end up doing that? Okay, the NCA mandates that every institution in NCA Division One, Two, and Three has a Student Athletic Advisory Council. It's made up of two representatives, I think it's two from every team, no matter how big or small the team is. Okay, and that's the student's voice on campus. Uh, it's also within the conference, and the conference has reps to the NCAA. So, and the NCAA listens to this group. When they're going through things at the convention in January, uh, they will ask the SAC group, what's your views on this? Sometimes it deals with social media. 
uh, how much people are allowed to get a hold of you when you're recruiting. It, it's a whole host of things, okay? But that's a very powerful voice that you have as a student athlete. Bailey Gibson, a sophomore, Cash Thompson, a senior, are our two reps for the SAC group. So sometimes they may talk to you guys as a group about certain things that SAC is doing. I know last year they started a point competition thing with teams, which was kind of janky because it was rigged. Yeah, Personal opinion. Okay. Uh, but I think we got a very good SAC rep that's kind of in charge of figuring that point system out this year. He's my son and I've been working him all summer long. I'm saying, this is how you need to do this. Okay, wrestlers need some more points. Okay. Uh, but that's an important group, so make sure you're aware of that. I usually try to have one upperclassman, junior, senior, and then one sophomore usually replaces the senior going out, so we have an older and younger, and we can keep somebody in there for several years figuring out uh, how that system works. So if you're interested in that later in the year, uh, be in the springtime, let me know, because Cash will be graduating, and we'll be looking to add somebody new in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we hope, <laughs> But then again, maybe we're hoping it's not. Okay. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, your cell phone pictures, your group chat. Okay? You guys have to be very careful what you're putting out there. Okay? You will get tied to Ohio Northern University, and you will get tied to this wrestling program very quickly. All right? So... Stop and think twice before you put something out post. It may seem funny at the time. It may not be so funny two hours later. All right? Watch what pictures you post on those things. Now, I think your guys' group chat, you can probably be a little looser amongst yourselves. Okay? The coaches and I are not on that one, but you guys need to keep that one under control too. Okay? Because you're again, Political correctness, somebody gets offended, whether right or wrong or indifferent, doesn't matter. Okay, we don't want those issues. So be careful what you're posting and what you're putting on. Uh, Coach McClay has taken over our social media. So if you've seen a little bit different some things we're doing, he's taken that over. That was one of the reasons, uh, actually reason number two, why I wanted to add another coach. Not only one, to have a lightweights coach, two to take over the social media because that's pretty much a full-time job. Uh, and he'll attest to that when he's putting together video clips for like three, three and a half hours a day to post out one quick little <coughs> yeah, 15 second clip. All right. But he's taking that over. We want to add, you know, take another step in the right direction with social media, not only to promote the program, but for recruiting and everything else. So uh, there may be some things he, you know, if he wants a picture, he's got all the film from last year to his disposal to, to post things out, do whatever he wants with that. Uh, but if you got ideas and things for him, let him know, okay? Um, we'll probably open up for gear orders uh, and for shoes. Uh, here probably another week, 10 days, sound about right, Kyle? Yep. Okay, we had that gear order this summer that if parents or anything, you know, especially freshmen wanted to buy before you came, uh, we'll probably do another one here soon, and then maybe even another one so you've got time to get that stuff if you want to order anything for Christmas gifts for brothers, sisters, grandma, grandpa, parents, whatever. Okay, But we can also have access to getting you uh, running shoes or and lift or uh, wrestling shoes. Okay, We've got a deal with ASICs that you can get 50% off. Uh, basically what a sporting goods store pays for the shoes before they mark them up and sell them to you is what we can get them for. So you don't have to buy anything. All right? It's just that we offer that so you guys have that ability. Uh, we don't make money on it. The only thing we do is we will, for each pair order, we have $5 for shipping. That covers the shipping cost. So it's not a fundraiser or anything we do to make money. Jacob. Are we still doing Brutus this year? Uh, I can call and get prices on Brutus if you want Brutus prices as well. First year we got a real good deal. Last year didn't seem to be as good. Or we didn't get a better one than the other teams did. Uh, the first year we got a better deal than most teams. But uh, I can check on Brutus shoes as well. We can still get Nike through our Nike rep. Uh, but then the, we can also get the Asics. Uh, the Asics we can get tennis shoes, running shoes, any kind of shoe you want. So if you got a brother or sister, or mom and dad, they want running shoes and stuff, they, they can order them off of this, we'll order them, we'll give them to you, 
same thing, 50% off. Okay, uh, so I'll get that information out to you here in the next week or so, so we have time. And usually it comes in within week, 10 days. Uh, I know the ACE is all they're pretty good. But the thing is, when you order them, I can get right in the system, and I can tell you if they have them in stock or not. So if they have, don't have them in stock, we won't even make the order. All right, I'll just get back with you and say, can't get that pair, or figure out a different one. Okay. Um, lifting. Okay. We cannot be lifting or doing anything as a team except for what we're doing right now as far as me. We are in right now what they're calling the gating period. Simple terms, what that means is these are all NCAA guidelines that we, how the university is going to follow. We need to have the number of coronavirus cases in Hardin County, which we are located in, has to be in a decline for a 14-day period. Okay, uh, Hardin County has done very well on this. My fear was we bring 30,000 students back due to the number spiked up. Uh, that could still happen, but the university uh, did a uh, COVID test on 115 of the band's uh, members that came in about a week before school started, before freshmen came last week, and there was one case out of 115. That was really good. Last Thursday and Friday, they tested all the coaches, every sport, and they also tested all the fall incoming athletes because they were originally planning that they would be going into their practice session. Obviously, that's all changed, but they stayed with, let's go ahead and test all them. Uh, what I was told today is they found one. Uh, and I don't know how many, but you take 100 and some football players, or we got like 80 soccer players. Uh, they did all the fall sports, they had men and women's lacrosse, so 250, 300 student athletes, and, and they found one positive case, is what I was told. So that's a very, very good sign uh, for us and the university, obviously. And it's a good sign that hopefully the gating period doesn't go more than 14 days. We will be notified from the athletic training staff when they're going to say the gating period has stopped. And we can go into the phase they're calling the transition phase. The transition phase is another about 14 day period where that's when we can start Lifting as a group in our groups of 10, which I sent you today, which we'll go over in a little bit, okay? But that's when we can start doing something organized as far as the lifting and the running within those small groups, okay? If we get through that, phase one then starts out, basically everything just goes up a little bit more level. There's still no contact one-on-one -on -one <coughs> through a lot of these until we get to about phase two and phase three. I don't worry about phase two and three right now. They're all about two weeks long and conditions and everything gotta be moving in the positive direction as we approach where we can start practice, okay? Um, but right now, if you want to lift, can you? Okay, yes you can if you want to. The Kinghorn weight room is open from 5.30 a.m. to 8 a.m. and three o'clock to six o'clock for athletics. General students are not allowed in at those times. And those are the times that correspond when we normally, as when I say we, athletic teams, are in the weight room lifting. You guys will know, normally we're in there from three to five. We have racks reserved. General students can normally be in there during a normal year, okay? But this year, Dr. DiBiase has said when athletics are in there, no one else is allowed in there. You can only have 10 at a time, okay? But we can also take equipment into the field house. We can have a group of 10 at this station with dumbbells. We can have a group of 10 at another station. We'll figure that out when we get there. They're also planning on taking every other rack out of the free weight room and half the dumbbells and setting up a makeshift weight room in the field house. So now you have 20 people lifting at a time instead of 10, okay? Last I heard, they're hiring a company to come do all that because they're going to put special manning and stuff down to protect the field house floor. That may not get done to the end of this month. Okay, so we may have to start out with just 10 in the weight room at a time. But right now, we cannot have organized lifting. But if you guys want to go in and get a lift, if you can, 
You can go during the 5.30 a.m. to 8 a.m. or the 3 to 6. What I would suggest, and as a suggestion, if you want to lift, you go in during our 3 to 5 time slot. Okay? Now, you can only have 10 people in there at a time, but it will be nicer when we get 20 in there at a time because then it will work a little bit better. So you may come over. If there's already 10 people in there, you're not going to get in the lift. Okay? If you will look, and while I'm thinking of it, we'll just talk about that, your groups of 10. Okay? Everybody know what I'm talking about? Everybody get what I sent you? Okay. How I came up, and there's, there's not 10 in any group, okay? With 30, basically 34 guys, we have four groups. All right, if I went 10 in a group with one group of four. It made sense to me to divide you guys up by who you're rooming with, because you're already going to be with them. And this whole thing is to isolate guys and transition you through so that we're not exposed to each other as a whole team, but we stay in small little pods or groups. And if everybody's good, we just make that a little bit bigger through phase one, two, and three. Okay? But if you if you figured it out, okay, group A is pretty much all the guys that live off campus. Okay, for the most part. Okay, group B, um, I think you guys are the ones who lived in the Wits, Wasser, where do you guys live? Okay, the, the group B is affinity northeast and northwest or whatever it is. But that's all the guys that are in the affinity houses. Group C is Lima and Founders, okay? Uh, group D, Connor, which one you guys in? Where are you guys? What? Stadium. The stadium. So anybody in there is in one of the stadium apartments. And then group E are individuals who are not rooming with the rest of them. Okay, so I kept you guys in one group. All right, my thinking is if, if they have a breakout, or an outbreak, not breakout, uh, an outbreak in Founders in Lima, it isn't going to affect our whole team. We'll have it isolated in one group. So we can isolate that group. Everybody else can continue on. So that's how I came up with the groups. So if you want to lift right now, these groups aren't lifting groups right now. We cannot do that as a group yet. We're in the gating period. So if you want to lift, that's why I've got you listed pretty much with a roommate or somebody in like situation to you, you two go lift. All right? For the majority of it, it's roommate with roommate. So you guys are together all the time anyway, so we limit the exposure okay, if you guys decide you want to lift. All right? uh, if you want to go out and run, by all means, go out and run. And if you can do any strength training or anything that you want to do outside, that's even better than doing it in the weight room. If you're in the weight room, you make sure you spray that equipment down before you lift, and you make sure you spray it down after you lift. It's an absolute must, because that's what we will be doing when we're in there as a group. Right? And they got monitors over the King Horn, supposed to be making sure there's nobody, no more than 10 in there, and that you guys are cleaning the equipment and things when you're done. Okay? I'm not all bent to have everybody in there lifting right now. Number one, we can't get everybody in there right now. Go out and run. If you did what you were supposed to do this summer and you lifted, having a week to 10 days off isn't going to hurt you. And then you rest your body up before we get going here. Okay? If you didn't do what you were supposed to do all summer long, then two weeks ain't going to make anything up. Okay? So if you want to lift, you want to get a workout in, you want to go run, you can do that. Stay within the framework that they've given you. Don't go six guys go out and run together. Two of you. Okay? Stay with two. All right? Practice the social distancing the whole nine yards. All right? Be smart about this. Any questions on that? And these are the groups that we will go when, once we get into the transition phase in phase one, two, three. These are the groups we will stick with. The wrestling room is not open right now. Probably won't be until maybe phase two. And even when we go phase two, it's not going to be open where we just let all 34 of you go in there one day. We'll probably schedule different times. Here again, ease into it, be smart about it. The whole goal of everything we do, there's two goals. One is to make sure we stay in session in class. You guys keep working toward graduation. We don't have to go back to distance learning. 
that's goal one. And goal two is to have a rest of the season. So everything we do is based off of those two goals. Okay? Obviously, without the first goal, there won't be a second. Any questions on that? Okay. Um, study tables I told you about, freshman, that's Kinghorn 107, starting Wednesday night. Uh, no open mats, that restroom room's locked. We gotta keep it, don't try sneaking in there or doing anything silly. Here again, guys, follow the rules, do what they've asked you to do, in class, out of class, in the dorms, your apartments, whether you agree with it or not, doesn't matter. Just do what they ask you to do, all right? If everybody does that, we get through this, we'll accomplish those two goals. And it's only gonna take one person. That's the thing, one person decides to go to a party, do something they're not supposed to do, you get COVID, you infect your group, that's gonna shut your whole group down, okay? Can't have that. Uh, fraternities and parties while I'm on that, Talk to all you guys before in fraternities. If you decide that's what you want to do, that's what you will get out of your college experience. If you feel that will get you more of what you want out of your college experience than being on the wrestling team, that's fine. By all means, hang up the wrestling shoes, go join the fraternity or esports or any other group. You know, but again, this is our group. Okay? You guys are about wanting to see what you and us as a team can accomplish as a wrestling team as a wrestler, okay? We're not going to do anything to jeopardize that. And it's, it's, even in a normal year, it's team first, even more so in a year like this. Like I said, one guy, you know, it takes one guy to do something you're not supposed to do, and you could shut down the whole team, okay? So be smart, make good decisions, no different than you hear me tell you all the time. It's just got a little more right on it right now than a normal year, okay? Um, freshmen, be aware, uh, upperclassmen know this, but if you're in the dorms and somebody comes into your room and is drinking a beer, or if it's your roommate who's maybe not a wrestler drinking a beer, and they're not 21, okay, and an RA comes in, you will get written up, okay? If you are under 21, you cannot be in a room where there's alcohol. So if you happen to go to your RA's room, who's 21, and he's sitting there watching the ball game, drinking a beer, and you're in the room, he's got to rate you up in himself, okay? So you, you can't be in a room with him, period, all right? Sometimes if somebody walks in, they set one down, whatever, doesn't matter what the circumstances is, you're in that room, and you're going to be written up for it. Something silly like that happens, not your fault, or even if it is your fault, hey, contact me right away. Anything happens, you contact me right away. Okay? I need to know. Doesn't mean I'm going to go get you out. All right, but I need to know. I will find out. Will I not, upperclassmen? Yeah. Okay, I want to hear it from you. If you screw up, guys, be a man. Call me and say, Coach, I screwed up, and here's what I did. Okay, be a man about it. Don't try to hide it. Don't try to, oh, maybe you won't find out about it. I'll find out about it. I always do. And then I'll be more upset with the fact that you not coming to me and telling me. All right? So lesson number one, if you screw up, admit it, and contact me right away. Okay? Hopefully we don't have that happen. But don't, be, don't make a bad situation worse. Okay, bad situation, contact me. Right. Um, okay, as we talked a little bit earlier, your priority number one is class and your grades. On your schedule, it actually blocks out the three to six time slot for wrestling. 24 hours in a day, three hours a day for wrestling. Right now, we can't even do that, okay? But normally, you take away that three hours, that leaves you 21 hours a day. You get eight hours of sleep, that leaves you with 13 hours a day to work on your academics, okay? Hopefully, you don't have to put 13 hours a day into your academics. Some of you may. There may be some days you do, some days you don't. But you are in control of what you do with your time. If you spend 
six hours one night till three in the morning playing video games, and then you're tired the next day and can't, you know, make it to class or something, you're screwing up. Keep your priorities straight. Know what your priorities are. Nothing wrong with playing some video games if you keep it under control. Okay? And here again, gee, I have trouble getting up in the morning. Well, if you're staying up to three o'clock in the morning playing video games, you're gonna have trouble getting up. So be smart, get your sleep, have your relaxation time in there, whether it's video games or whatever it is, schedule that in to keep the priority straight. The classroom stuff's got to come first. If you don't do it that way, you will make college harder than it has to be. Okay? College can be demanding, but it doesn't have to be hard. Usually people that have a hard time in college are ones who make it harder than it has to be by putting everything off to the last minute, trying to crank it out, praying hopefully you get that C, right? Don't put yourself in that situation. It's no different than wrestling. Okay? You train all week long so you can perform on that test come Saturday. You don't wait till the night before and try to crank it all out. And if you do, you're not gonna wrestle very well. Same thing in the classroom. I understand that. Um, talked about team coming first. Okay, be a leader, guys. Upperclassmen know this. We do not have captains on this team. We haven't for about 15 years. Uh, I don't believe in picking out one or two or three guys and say, you're the captain, you're instantly smarter than everybody else, and you should be in control of everything. Okay? Every single guy in this room is a leader on this team. I will guarantee you by the end of the year, every one of you will have, at a point, needed to step up as a leader. Whether that's in a classroom, whether that's in a dorm where somebody maybe is not going to do something that they are getting ready to do something, maybe they shouldn't, and you stop them. Okay, that's being a good teammate, and that's being a leader. It may be, we need you out on the mat to get a pen. Okay, it may be out on the mat not to give up a pen. I mean, it will be something, every single one of you will be in a position that the team needs you to lead at that moment in time. It may be a time when we're all there watching you, and it may be a time when there's nobody there watching you. There isn't a difference between the two. You've got to be a leader whether anybody's watching or not watching. Okay? Everybody will be called upon to step up and be a leader at some point in time of this season and every season. Okay? So make sure you're ready when it comes. Uh, here again, along those same lines, you got to bring something to the team. Okay? What you can do is be a detractor to the team. Some guys may just bring great athletic ability and great wrestling ability. Some guys may bring a great GPA. Some guys might bring they're just a damn good teammate and they're always there for their teammates. Okay? Everybody brings something a little bit different, but you got to bring something. Okay, to be a productive member of the team, you've got to bring something. And not everybody can bring the same thing, and not everybody's at the same level right now. What you bring right now this year might be different than what you're able to bring next year or the year after that, but everybody has to bring something to the team. Okay? That goes in line with, you know, when we recruit. I don't get worried about what you did or didn't do in high school, because that doesn't matter anymore. I've had guys before that have, have went through, all through their senior year and never started. Okay? So what did they bring to the team? They brought great sportsmanship and they brought being a great teammate because they helped other guys. Everybody brings something. There's only going to be 10 of you out there scoring points for Ohio Northern University at a time. Okay? Basically got 35 guys. Only 10 of you can be out there at a time scoring points. Get, hopefully get you all out there. There's only going to be 10 that will represent Ohio Northern at the MCA Regional Tournament. But that doesn't mean if you're not there that you're less important or not important to the team. You're extremely important to the team because it takes everybody to make sure we're always ready to go, whether that's on a Saturday night on campus or whether that's when we're out on the map. Okay, it takes everybody. Uh, we talked about that this summer. The university's asking you guys not to be going home on the weekends. Okay? Hope you said goodbye to the girlfriend before you left. See you at Thanksgiving. Okay? She's going to love you just as much. Heart, you know, 
Distance makes the heart grow fonder. So she ought to be real fond of you if you're away from her for 15 weeks. Okay? But there's a reason they're asking you to make that commitment. Okay? You can't be going back home and then bringing something, as in the coronavirus, back to campus. Okay? If the testing is any indication that I talked about earlier, we're off to a great start. And if we keep everybody here on the campus, kind of in that bubble, not doing stupid things, not going outside and coming back in, we get through this. Okay? But I don't I know I told you guys that this summer, and you guys have been around a day or two now. I don't think there's anything else this university can do to make it safer for you to be in class and on campus right now. I mean they gave every one of you a thermometer, they gave every one of you a mask. Okay? The procedures of being in class, cleaning everything, the plexiglass labs, they can't do anything else they haven't already thought of. So who's that leave it up to? You guys and every student on this campus. Okay? Talk about stepping up being a leader. And that's the thing. For us to be able to accomplish our goals that we want to accomplish, we got to count on people who don't care about our goals and don't have those goals. Okay? So some of that is out of our control. There's going to be a lot of things this year out of our control. Now for classmen, what I tell you before, you focus on what? What you have control of. All right? There's certain things as coaches, we may not have control of it, but we will deal with it. What's our schedule going to look like? When are we going to start practice? When are we going to go home for Thanksgiving? Are we going home for Thanksgiving and Christmas? But the answer is probably yes to that. Okay, but I, I don't know those things yet. Okay? I thought about it. I know I got different options. You guys don't need to worry about that stuff right now. All you need to worry about is what class you're going to go to tomorrow. We'll tell you what's going on as soon as we know and have a plan figured out, along with the guidelines of what the university gives us. Okay? But take care of the things you have control of. Do not waste time worrying about stuff that you have no control of. Okay? It ain't going to do you any good. Okay? Focus on yourself and what you need to do to get the job done in that classroom. But weekends, stay here, all right? And like I said, in, in the past, we usually have a cookout, we go bowling, we go uh, swimming. What else have we done, John? I don't know, we used to go canoeing, we used to do all these things. Okay, go to movie. A lot of this, it's all out right now. Hopefully we can get back to where we can start picking some of that stuff up. But here again, I, you guys need to hang out with each other on the weekends, but right now you can't quite all hang out together. Okay, it's a little different. Okay? But get in your little groups, pods, as we start going. Be there for each other, hang out, okay, do things together. I'm still trying to figure out what the best way is getting the freshmen mixed in with the upperclassmen when we're not allowed to do anything. Yet. Okay? Um, the freshmen, at least we've got study table where you guys will all be in there together. Okay? Started on that. Uh, cafeteria. How many days we got to eat in the cafeteria? How was it today? Was it a mess trying to get in and out? Or? Okay, it, it's it, here. Place, and here again, there. That's a puzzle that's going to be real hard to solve. Okay, my suggestion is get it to go. Get in, get your food to go, and get out. Of there. Okay, don't stay in there to eat. You know, you got a social distance anyway. Get your food, get it to go. Go sit on a park bench somewhere because you can't have food and drinks in the class. All right, but just get in and get out would be my advice to you, okay? Um, and I'm sure they'll make adjustments to try to make the flow of being here again. They've never done something like that before. The what? Yeah, common areas, I think, yeah, like, I think you, even here in Dickey, you can sit out in the open area, you know, if you got a class here in Nash, kind of half hour before. Put it this way, if, if they don't want you doing it, they'll let you know where they'll be signed. Okay, they got signs everywhere. Okay, so, and make sure you leave the signs where they're at, especially those really cool looking ones that they have with the polar bear, the mask on, saying thank you for wearing your mask. <laughs> <laughs> those should not show up in your room spring semester. Okay, because that was the first thing that went through my mind. <laughs> I was like, dang, that was great in your room when you first. I was like, okay, don't go there.
right. That's a little obvious. <laughs> okay. Um, you're again wearing that mask. Anytime you leave your room, have that mask on. Okay. When you and your roommate are in your room together, again, you should be safe. You get socialized with your roommate. But if you're going to go down the hallway to talk to somebody or see something, uh, have that mask on. Just wear it. Okay. The way the tracing works is if somebody tests positive, it will trace back who they've been with. If you were with that person and had a mask on, you're probably fine. If you were with that person and did not have a mask on and you're in contact with them for like 15 minutes, they're going to quarantine you. Those are loose guidelines. I'm explaining it right now. But if you got that mask on, it makes a big difference. And that comes right from the health department. All right? That's how they are looking at it. So, Basically, they say to transmit it, you need to be with somebody without a mask for a 15 minute period, close contact, less than six feet. So, here again, if you go down and see somebody and they're in the room, there's already five, six, seven people in there, don't make it eight. Okay, go see them later. Right, you don't want to be congregating big groups together like that yet. Um, Um, okay, work study jobs. If anybody's interested in a work study job, I don't think they have any more positions open. Um, the checkers that I sent out, it sounds like they got more than they need. Okay, but if anybody's looking for something, let me know. Uh, if you need the money, no problem, we'll try to find something. Um, wrestling calendar. Hey Kyle, have you sent them invites or anything? To the yes, calendar? everyone should have received calendar invites for both the Ball Boy and Film calendar and the ONU season calendar. And the ONU season calendar, that's when we'll put things on there when we're lifting, when we're doing that, when we're departing for a road trip, where we're wrestling at, when we're doing it. That'll be, so that's your guys' calendar that you guys can reference. Uh, we'll get study table. Normally it's got the whole season already laid out on it. Obviously, we can't do that right now, so we'll add things as we go. Uh, so if you kind of forget, well, when's that study table again? If you're a freshman, you know, you look on that calendar, we'll put everything on there. Uh, I think you've got their medical times on here too, right? Yes, you, all your physicals should be in the ball boy and film calendar individually with alerts to remind you 10 and 30 minutes prior to your appointment. Um, and then also the remind me, which that's the system we use that when I send you guys messages or reminds or it's called remind me, you all join that, okay? Do not reply from that, right? Because it, it, it'll come to me, it doesn't have your name, well, it'll say your name in it, but it doesn't show up in under, like, Skeeter. So if he said, and you do this all the time, you always respond to that. Because sometimes I'll go back and look for something <laughs> that we talked about, so I will pull up Skeeter. Well, it's not in that train of um, text conversations we've had, and it shows up as weird numbers I can never find. It. So if you're going to respond something back to me, just go to my normal phone number, cell number, and text me if you've got a question or something. Okay, just don't respond from that one itself. And that's not Skeeter's fault, I've never told him that. Because you're the only one that ever does it. <laughs> All right, uh, so be aware of that. Um, okay, Big Brothers I talked about. Okay, the kind of review again, we've got the gating period, which is, they're saying 10 to 14 days, depending on how it's going. Um, then we go into the transition period for 14 days. Then we're in phase one for four, 10, they're saying 10 to 14 days. And then phase two, then phase three, if we get to that, then, then we're regular practice, we're rolling. So the goal is to get to that phase three, all right? Uh, but we can only go as fast as it, they'll allow us to go from one to the other. Also new this year, and this is stuff you guys never deal with, okay, but just to let you know, normally we are given by the NCA 19 weeks of competition and practice, okay? And that week is considered a uh, consecutive seven-day period. Now, Iowa Northern calculate, calculates it Sunday to Sunday. So for example, if uh, we start practice on the first day in a normal year and it's a Friday, that counts as a week. 
You only got one practice and it counts as a week. We're allowed 19. When I send you guys in a normal year home for Thanksgiving that week, so if that week period we're not practicing, it doesn't count as a week. Okay? So you can get your 19 in if you have some time off at Thanksgiving, some time off at Christmas. Okay? The NCAA for this year, right now only, they've done away with the 19 week rule and they're allowing us 114 days. 19 weeks times six days a week is 114. Okay, so it's the same amount of time, but we can spread it out differently. My understanding as of right now is we can start that anytime we want. And if we've got, we get to nationals and we still have five days left, we can have five days of practice in the spring. And we get 114 days. Now, I don't know when we're gonna start. I gotta make sure we leave enough the second half, because competition can't start until January 1st, but when I calculated out January 1st through nationals, I think that left 78 days that we could use up to January 1st. And if we start on October 1st, maybe that day, but if we start on October 1st, we have a week off for Thanksgiving, week off for Christmas, we still got like five days left. And we have to still give you one day a week off. Our day a week is always Sunday. All right, but we've got 114 days to do whatever we want and get you guys ready to go, okay? The other thing we'll just talk briefly about because um, there's all kind of confusion on it. They granted a one-time waiver for eligibility. What that means, and here again, there's a lot of questions about it, and the NCAA is supposed to be coming out with a clarification. But basically, it says, and there are different conferences I've talked to are interpreting it differently. That's why I don't want to say too much until we get a ruling from the NCAA to clarify it. But my understanding of it is, we are allowed in a normal year 16 dates of competition. Whether we wrestle a duel or we go wrestle five duels in the same day, it's a date is one day, no matter how many times we wrestle, okay? We're allowed 16 dates in a normal year. What they're saying right now is if we use less than 50% of those 16 dates, then you do not use or burn a year of eligibility, okay? Now, we're not starting the season until January 1st already anyway, okay, so that cuts down on them. What isn't clear does the regional and nationals count in those dates? Depends on who you talk to. That's why we need the NCA. Will we go above 50%, below 50%, 50%? I do not know, okay? If I would say we're gonna wrestle one more day of competition and it puts us over 50% by one match, are we gonna do that? No, okay? I don't really see where that is gonna help if we don't use the year of eligibility, except for our pharmacy majors. They're gonna be here six years anyway. Everybody else, I plan on you graduating in four years, okay? So you might, we, we could wrestle this year, all right? And it may not cost you a year of eligibility. Now, if something happens and you got an extra year, great, okay? But you guys are here to be in school, you're here to graduate on time, that's still the goal. The other thing I haven't got answered yet, it depends on who you ask to, does the NCAA regional and national tournament count in that 50%? Some people say yes, some say no, which that, that makes a huge difference. Because now you go from eight dates of regular season competition down to six, if the regionals and nationals count. And not everybody's gonna be in the NCAA regional and nationals. The way it's explained to me as of right now, that if those count, our, let's say our basketball team has allowed 24 competitions in a year, and they say, well, the conference, we're gonna only schedule 12, start January 1st. Well, what that would mean is if my team wins the conference and they still have an NCAA playoff and tournament, and we get in it, we're taking on the number one seed in the country and get smoked, my team loses their eligibility because we're one game over 500 or 50%. And every other team in the conference still gets their year of eligibility. That doesn't seem fair to me. Okay, so there's a lot of things with that that we've got to get clarified. I will let you know as we find that out. Here again, I look at it, the, you guys that are pharmacy, that 
could be an advantage for you guys. And we, there are other schools in our conference that, you know, they're on the eight-year plan to graduate. That might be an advantage for them. We're not on the eight-year plan to graduate here. Okay? We're on the four-year plan to graduate. That's what we still plan on doing. Okay? But I'll let you know what's going on with that as that materializes. I just don't. Here again, I don't want to hide anything from you. I want to make sure you guys know exactly what's going on as I know it and as I understand it, when I know it and when I understand it. Okay? Okay. Any questions? Coaches, did I forget anything that just kind of popped out? No, I don't think so. Oh, I do have one thing. We're not going to be able to see this. Okay. Um, you know, when I started finding out that we were going to have to wear masks, you know me, I like to look different than others. I like us to be different than others. Not that we're better than others. We just, we're just Ohio Northern wrestlers, and we like to have things that others don't have. So I have ordered face masks. Okay? Uh, I think all the seniors and a few other guys, I sent them out this summer, hey, what do you think of this? All right. Um, the lady told me when I ordered them, she guaranteed she'd have them to me by August 1st. I didn't ask her which year. That was my mistake. Okay. And by the shipping label, we're supposed to have them tomorrow. Okay. What I wanted was something different or unique. All right. I wanted to say ONU Wrestling. First got this idea, I was thinking of something for the whole athletic department, and I decided to have with that, I want something that's just us, but I want you guys to have something that no one else has. So we designed a mask. What we tried to design was for it to look like a pole bear, the nose and a mouth. Now, if you know anything about trying to draw a pole bear, that's damn near impossible to do. I think they came up with a pretty good one, all right? Might look a little cartoonish, it doesn't have fangs hanging out or anything, okay? But it's going to be something that you guys have that no one else has. I've ordered extras, so once we hand them out to you guys, uh, we'll send it out to the parents if they would like to purchase some. They're again, I'm not looking to make money on them. I just want to cover our costs. Probably have some of our alumni who are very, very good to you guys as far as donating money. They'll get a free one, okay? Uh, we take care of those. All right, but here's a picture of it. It's got only you on this side. This side will say wrestling, okay? But it's got the nose, it's got a little mouth, kind of not really, I don't know if that's a pulled or mouth or not a pulled or mouth, but it's something different and unique that no one else has and will have, okay? As soon as those come in, which I'm expecting them tomorrow, uh, I'll make sure you guys get it. Right. Questions? Anybody have any questions? 